We are here to chew bubble gum and drink bourbon. And we are all out of bubble gum. Ladies and gentlemen, Baker's 13, three, two, action. Well, good evening. Welcome to another exciting edition of So Into Bourbon. I'm Glenn, this is Charlie. Charlie, tell them what we have on the bar tonight. Tonight, we're proud to offer the 2024 release of Baker's 13. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Baker's 13 was one of our favorites from last year. It a surprise really, favorite. Really was. Really enjoyed that one. Yeah. And Baker's 13 is um, a little rare. It is. This is only the third release. That's right. 2019 inaugural release. They didn't re-release it again until 2023. And now 2024, we, we got are one. Again. We yeah. got one. Yeah. And we got it at the Bourbon Festival. Picked it up at Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Um, what did we pay for this? We paid right around 150 ish okay. which is the I think last economy. year, I think last year I picked one up at Meyer for 129.99. So and MSRP is is sneaking up. It is in the 150, mm -hmm. 149.99 suggested retail price. Inflation. Make <sighs> bourbon affordable again, people. That's right. Everybody knows. A lot of people say it. Not just us. Other people do. Baker's 13, same uh, mash bill, which whatever it is, there is some. Um, I don't want to say conjecture, yeah. but. It's either 77, 13, 10, 77 percent corn, 13 percent rye, 10 percent malted barley, or 75, 13, 12. It's yes. one of those two. We don't know which one. They don't say. It's one of those two. We think. We, we think. think it is. I don't know. Yeah. That's Jim Beam. Yeah. 13 uh, years old, obviously. Yes. 107 proof. These are all single barrels. All bakers. All bakers are. So ba all bakers are 107 proof. All bakers are single barrels. That is their little niche that falls into niche. niche. What was that? That was their little niche that falls into. <laughs> so it's not a barrel proof. It's not a low proof. It sits right there in that middle, in that sweet spot. And bakers are typically regarded as being aged a little higher in the rickhouse. Well, let's get into this. Let's do it. And then we'll talk some more. We'll talk some more. Uh, while we are taking a look at this beautiful Baker's 13, make sure to like and subscribe so you get more yes, hard-hitting Jim Beam content. Nice, really nice, like, brown. Yeah, it, it is. It, it almost has, like a brown yeah, ale. Like, it, it's very, very lovely color. Very nice, very nice. Puts, um, it's oily. It, it's oily and it really sticks to the glass. Yeah, and it doesn't like moving around a lot. Mm -hmm. It's, it's pretty viscous. Shall we nose? Yes, we shall. Man, I love that nose. It is such a beautiful, just a... It just yeah. smells like bourbon. Yes. It, it, ju it just, it's sweet, and there's a little bit of ethanol on it, which you want, like, you want to know that it, like, oh, this is, this is a whiskey, this there's is bourbon. brown sugar, dark yes. fruits, there's... I don't get a whole lot of char on the nose. No, but th there's definitely, I it's mean. A little sweetness. It, if it's not char, it's definitely cooked like yes. something. Like everything is like blackened or like if, it, if you get sweet, it's, oh, it's brown sugar. It's like burnt brown sugar. Almost like, I don't know, like canned pears or it, something. It, it's got a great nose. <sighs> mm, 13 years. Cheers. Cheers, Baker's 13. The little giggle, the yeah. Charlie giggle. Yeah. You want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Oh, okay, good. So the the palate just kind of really follows up where the nose starts to take you, right? Everything's just kind of reinforced. It's sweet, but not too sweet. You get the baking spices. I get some fruit. You get some caramel. You get some vanilla. The finish. You get a nice little bit of oak on the finish, but not quite as oaky as you would expect for a 13 year, no, right? No, it, 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 it's so good. It is very good. I, I will say, I think if it's lacking anywhere, it's the finish. Yes, the, the finish to me, well, I, I, I'll, I'll jump in if it's all right. Everything you said was wrong. Um, it's not, no, I'm just kidding. 
It, it is exactly what you said. It's you get, first of all, the mouth feels phenomenal. Like it instantly caused my whole mouth to like salivate. Like just whatever it was, my palate was like, yes, more of that, please. And it's funny you say that, right? As you're saying that, I'm nosing again. I'm like, there's almost a little bit of a barbecue note. On yeah, it, everything yeah. is, it's, if it's not char, it's, it's kind of like charred other stuff. But you get awesome sweetness and that kind of savory, like almost a barbecue note. Um, there is some fruit, there's some vanilla, and then there is a level, I mean, either way, if it's 13, it's 13% raw either way, right? There is a great baking spice that just kind of tickles the sides of your tongue. And I, it even kind of got me like in my upper lip, like behind, like in front of my teeth and between mm -hmm. my lip. And it just tingled. And to me, that's the finish. There's not much of an oaky finish that, that kind of sticks around. Um, but it's, it's not lacking. It just... You're no, like, oh, it, the only thing I quick. Like, what I'm missing on the finish is like that bitter chocolate. Now, there's oak there, but just not that deep. Yeah. Like semi-sweet bitter chocolate note that I usually get on a on a, something well, aged like this. But I everything think, else, like I'm not. Believe me, I, this is good. This it's, is really good. They, they, that's there, that yeah. oakiness and that bitter chocolate. It just doesn't hang around very right. long. And, and then it just kind of dissipates. It's um, it's an interesting pour. I really like this. I, I, I wish we had last year's Baker's 13. To yeah, to I wish it. we do too. That's what I was just thinking. Oh, wait. Hark. <laughs> <Ha, ha. laughs> I... I it's been a struggle, but I have managed to save enough from last year's bottle. I don't care what they say, Glenn. You're a consummate professional. Uh, uh, last year's is going to be out on the outside. It's on the outside. Outside. Keep outside. outside. Outside your window, which, you know, as far as we know, same mash bill. Yeah, nothing's changed. Uh, the except only difference is... It's a single this barrel. Is, this year's, and they're both single barrels. Yeah, so. they're both single barrels. Yeah. So let's uh, let's let the comparison begin. Cleanse, you know what? That's cleanse the old palate. Yeah. Uh, also, Baker's Bourbon was named for Baker, Baker Beam, Beam, who was Jim Beam. I'm sorry, Booker Nose cousin, and he apparently worked at the Beam Distillery for 38 years and had every job you can have. Um, including Master Distiller. Do you see any difference in color? To me, no. Last Negligible. year's looks a little bit lighter, but that could be it because could it's just closer because to it's, the light. And it's I don't know. been open. Yeah. I don't know. They're, they're very similar. You know what? This thing... It, it clings to the glass and it does not run down. Yeah, my, like mine, it's not running down like the glass I, at all. It's weird. Like I put a. That's why I kind of made that weird noise. I put a ring around it and it just stuck to it. Yeah, that's interesting because look how. And it, I don't know if it. That's weird. Like this one immediately starts running down. Yeah, last year's it, just. It, it's, it's now it's starting. It's starting to yeah. now. Unbelievable. And, and this should be very interesting because these are both single barrels, so they yep. should be very unique. Ooh, um, <laughs> similar, very similar. <sighs> this? There is a note that jumps out. So. I think last year's has a little bit, and I don't know if this is what you're referring to, Maybe a little bit of a nutty note. I was gonna say like a, a nutty or more of um, like a bread or yeah. bakery note yeah. to it. Almost like um, rolled flour or a bread crust sort of. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick, the candlestick maker. Well, let's, which uh, obviously this one's been open for a year, so it's had a little time to I'm gonna oxidize. See, I'm, I'm gonna drink it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink it too. You put yours down. <laughs> Cheers, Baker's 13. This one's got a little more mustiness on it. Mm. 
Wow. Different, different animal. It is. Um, I'm getting more caramel on this one. And I'm getting a little more like lighter fruits on it. But mostly caramel. I feel like this one is a deeper, darker flavor. Which one? The the last year's. Really? To me, yeah. I, I get I don't get that big splash of fruit on the up front. Now again, it's been open, I get that. And the really cool thing about this one, the 23, is the baking spice doesn't show up until you think, oh, there's no baking spice. And then it shows up and it's it's not nearly as prevalent as it is in the 24. And again, we know they're fresh pops, whatever. But there is a lot of baking spice in, in 2024's release. I don't get much of that spiciness in the 23. It shows up late and then it's like, here it is. And then it just slowly disappears You're and right. it stays right in the middle of yep. your tongue. It's really interesting. They're, they're familiar. They're almost the same, but they're also very different. And that's why it's impossible not to be romantic about bourbon. 2023s, you're 100% correct on the baking spice. Um, it's got a lot more vanilla. It's a little hint of that bitter chocolate that I was talking about on the finish. Um, I'm going to have to go back to 2024. Yeah, I, I am also. I, I'm going to take a drink of water, though. Yeah, I guess I should, too. I do want to say, too, where else are you going to find a 13-year single barrel from a heritage distillery like Jim Beam for under 150 bucks? Okay, it's 100, under 160 bucks. <clears throat> Great bottle. They could have put this in a crazy decanter and sold it for $300, and people still would line up for it. Baker's is like the forgotten bourbon. Yeah. And, and and I don't know why that is. Is it because it's 107 proof? Is it, it because their seven year standard is a single barrel at 107 and, and it just sits on the shelf? I'm back to the 2024 now. I will, so am I. I would definitely say 2024 has, like you said, much more spicy, like baking spice to it still within that classic bourbon profile. Like I would say yeah. either one of these, if you want to introduce someone to what this bourbon tastes like, yeah. this would be a great uh, they're, they're pour both, to give them. They're both wonderful bottles. And again, hard not to be romantic about bourbon because they are the same mash bill. They are from the same distillery. The only difference between them is one is a year older in age, you know, when it was made. Absolutely. Um, they also say that Baker's, I read this somewhere, and I cannot confirm this, but it says Baker's is a lower entry proof. It's distilled at a lower proof. Mm -hmm. So that may be a little different of, of how those wonderful flavors, but overall, if you don't have any experience with Baker's, whether it's the seven year standard single barrel or lucky enough to get the 13, you're really doing yourself a disservice. Great bottles classic wonderful bourbon charlie let's talk a little bit about these little oh yes uh, these little it looks like lead i know yep. it's not lead but it's plutonium so this has the bottle number on it yes yes the, you, you can get on yes you can baker's get on baker's website and you can enter in your serial number so on on the uh standard bakers this is a seven year that i've had for a long time on the neck tag it has a serial number and the website is phenomenal. You can buy a bottle and go home and get on Baker's website and enter your serial number, your barrel number, and you roll a barrel through the rack house and it gives you all the stats on your bottle. Yeah, it's really cool. It it's shows you exactly where the barrel was in the rack house, which does it show you which rack house? It, it doesn't show you which rack house. It shows you the, the level in the row it shows you the temperature, the high temperature, the low temperature. It shows you the Claremont facility and the rack houses that they pull from. Um, it shows when it was dumped, when it was barreled, how old it is. It's awesome. It's a really fun little experiment. So if you're sitting at home and you've got a bottle of Baker's, be like, yeah. oh crap, I'm, I'm going really cool. that out. It's really cool. Yeah, for so, bourbon nerds like us. It's awesome. Charlie, 
let's rate it. Okay. And then I want to know which one you would choose. I don't remember what I rated this last year. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, we're we're only rate, rating We're only rating this one. Um, I will give it a solid, a very solid... Um, you know what? I'm going to go eight. I'm going to just hit it with an eight, and I will tell you why. It is delicious. I'm never not in the mood for that flavor profile. Like, there's never a time where I'm like, ah, I don't want that. And, and I know you, because you even said, like, I've had to, like, not drink that. Like, that will be the worst part of this is not going back to it because it is just so good, so classic. I'm giving it an eight because I think $150, as crazy as that sounds, is a really, it's well priced at I'm that. i a little bubble gum on that. That's weird. What do you rate it? <laughs> on which one? The 24? Mm -hmm. I'm going back for bubble gum. I'm going to give it an 8.2. Mm. It's really good. It's, um, you know, can I come up with superlatives about it? No, but it's just, it's just pure Kentucky bourbon. Damn solid. Yep. It, it just, there's nothing bad about it. There's nothing, like you said, it, it's just... There's never a time where you're not in the mood for that. It, and 107 proof, I feel like it is proofed perfectly. Yeah. It, it's, and it's and it's I a, talked about the finish earlier. I feel like the finish has gotten better yeah. since we've kind of been sitting here talking and tasting. I feel like the rice spice has settled down a little bit, yeah. too. Of course, All right. we've Which one? Drink a bunch. Which one are you picking? You have to pick one. <sighs> this is going to sound like such a cop out, but it is literally a coin flip. I... I I, I love them both. They are both, and I think I said this, they are both so similar yet so different, but they're more similar than they are different. And I know that sounds like a cop out. They're both beautiful. They're both great. Um, I, if it, from a spicy standpoint, I want that. If I didn't want spicy, I'd pick the, the I 23. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. I mean, I guess it depends on which mood you're in. But I would say, if I if you held a gun to my head, I would say 2023s, just because it's got that that really nice caramel. Caramel. That I like, yeah. yeah. I just took a sip of it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. man, that's good. You know what? <sighs> They're both so good. <laughs> I do love this. And, and this is the thing about high dollar bottles, limited release bottles is when you get them and you, you know, separate yourself from your hard earned money, you want to be rewarded. There's nothing worse than spending, well, any amount of money on a bourbon and being like, ah, oh, it's a drain pour. These are, if you see them, must buy, must buy. Yeah. You will not be disappointed. I feel like I would love to put either one of these in a blind up against, I don't Some, know, name your yeah. stupid you know, chase well, tater bottle. But that's the thing. Like, name me another 13 year from a heritage distillery that's that's cheaper than that. You can't. I can't and think of one. You, I, I can't think of one. Um, and, I, and I love them. The, this is obviously our second year in a row of being fortunate enough to have them. They're great. And we have, can we do a little teaser? Yes, let's tease. We can do a little teaser episode coming soon. Also at the Bourbon Festival. This is new for 2024. This is the Baker's Seven Year High Rye. So this is a high rye mash bill. Details to come. We are going to drink that against the regular old Baker's. Very excited about that. A little mouse told me this is really good. Ooh, ooh. mice always talking. Glenn, tell the people what they need to do. Wait, it's a little birdie told me, right? Yeah, it's not a mouse. <laughs> but it, Glenn talks mouse to mice. Mouse bird. Mouse whatever. bird. Glenn talks to mice. It's a thing. That's going to be a new t-shirt. <laughs> Make sure you follow us on Facebook, So in the Bourbon, Instagram, the same. Whiskey Realtor on TikTok. And as always, keep those wallets loose. And your bungholes tight. Don't be talking to no mice either. <laughs> <laughs> or chirples. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Peace out. Is that Jim Nance's cousin? Yes, Phil Sims and Jim Nance had a baby. <laughs> the most oh off, my God. The most, the most off, terrible. Off putting person <laughs> known to man. Fun fact. <laughs>
both of those gentlemen have connections to Louisville. Well, Phil Sims Phil beat Sims up a guy from Louisville. Parking lot. Um, Jim Nance has family in Louisville. Okay. I know stupid facts. But you said it would be a fun fact. <laughs> All right, this is our third episode, so therefore, Are we poor? statistically, it should be our best. It should be our best. <laughs> oh, it's a hot tamale. That creeped me out a little bit. Why? Well, it, it fired off with some aggression. Oh, oh, oh! Like I'm nice and sloppy.